All right. Welcome, everyone. Tonight is Look at the Sun with Lisa Richards. We're pleased to have her back on. She is a plethora of knowledge. Uh, the Power Up series has been going very, very well, I think. Um, and there's so many different topics we can we can discuss. So we got some cool ones coming up. And tonight is Look at the Sun. All right. Off you go, Lisa. Awesome. Thank you. And I have to apologize up front. I'm a little hoarse. I uh, jinxed myself when I did the colloidal silver series and said I wasn't sick for like nine years. And then I got hit with something a couple of weeks ago and I've been fighting it off ever since. So, <laughs> But if I didn't have the tools in my toolbox that I did, I'm sure it would be way worse. And one of the things is the lack of sunlight, sun, sunshine. You know, um, we all lack that vitamin D, especially in the winter time. And um, I got stuck behind the computer a lot in the summer. So I wasn't even out in the sun a lot, which I'm sure added to this. Now it's my wake up call, you know, and it's telling me, pay attention to what you're preaching lady, start doing what you're preaching. So, but I love this topic because ever since I was a little girl, the sun has always been so powerful to me. I always felt the healing energy of it. You know, I always felt comfortable going out in the sun and laying down and just looking up at the sun and my eyelids, you know, the redness of the sun on the back of my eyelids. And it just always felt healing to me. So then when I can't found the sun gazing, it just kind of came natural that yes, you know, I know this has to be true. And I'm in Pennsylvania. So I don't have as many days in a row of sunshine that's needed to actually do the entire protocol. I would love to eventually someday move somewhere where there's sunshine all the time. Um, uh, but there's different ways that you can do it and you can still get the benefits from it, even if you don't get the sunshine every day. Um, so can I uh, do the screen share? <clears throat> Let me see here if you guys can see my screen. Does everybody see it okay? Okay, so today's topic is called Look at the Sun. And it's gonna be about sun gazing. So why would you want to look at the sun? Well, the sun is the main source of energy here on earth and staring intently at the sun, other ways known as sun gazing is beneficial physically, mentally, and spiritually. Ancient cultures understood the importance of the sun in many ways. Western culture though, has become disconnected to these simple ancient practices. And now it's, we're rampant with sickness, disease, loss of spiritual connection and mental issues. So here's some of the benefits of sun gazing. It actually improves your immune system. It improves your mental health. So you have more of a positive outlook on life. You have more intense dreams, more intense meditations. Your eyesight actually gets better. There's actually um, a group of doctors in Florida that actually heal people's eyesight by shining different types of light into their eyes. Um, it actually resets your circadian rhythm, and we'll go over what that is in a minute. It um, decalcifies the pineal gland, and we'll go over that in a minute as well. It also increases the size of your pineal gland. Um, you require less food for nourishment. Um, it improves your sleep. It boosts your melatonin and serotonin. And of course, the sun also boosts your vitamin D levels. It increases your energy levels, and it also um, gives you advanced psychic and intuitive powers if done properly, if the sun gazing is done properly. Okay, so what is the circadian rhythm? Uh, the circadian rhythm is actually the body's internal clock. Uh, which is naturally aligned with the cycle of day and night. And this is called the circadian rhythm. Um, the circadian rhythms control numerous processes in the body, including alertness, sleepiness, appetite, and body temperature. Now, what is the pineal gland? The pineal gland is a pine cone shaped endocrine gland, also known as the seat of the soul or the third eye. It's located in the center of the brain and has the same light receptors as the physical eyes. The main function of the pineal gland is to receive information from the light dark cycle and produce melatonin. And it regulates the body's biorhythms and also dictates the body's hunger and thirst, sexual desire and aging process. 
here's a photo of a, a calcified pineal gland. So when somebody talks about a blocked third eye, um, they're also talking about a calcified pineal gland and it can actually wreak havoc on your life. It can create anxiety, depression, pessimism, a tendency to overanalyze, delusions, paranoia, and other neurological disorders. A properly functioning pineal gland is synonymous with good health and well being. When performing at its ultimate capacity, the pineal gland releases important biochemicals such as dimethyltryptophan, which is otherwise known as DMT, and it's also known as the spirit molecule. DMT is a prime catalyst for higher states of consciousness, intuition, and even possibly the experience of universal consciousness or enlightenment. What causes calcification of the pineal gland are quite a few different things. Um, diet, pesticides, electrical magnetic frequencies, synthetic calcium, um, not being out in the sun, mercury, drugs, uh, the aluminum and deodorants, halides like fluoride in your toothpaste, chlorine and bromide, which are in a lot of our foods and stuff now, cigarettes, alcohol, tobacco, and sugar, pretty much anything that's bad for you can help or can cause calcification of your pineal gland. And we all suffer with this artificial light and blue light exposure. You know, we're all living in artificially lit environments and looking at your phone and TV screens after the sun goes down will actually send a signal to your body that the sun is still out. This disrupts the circadian rhythm and your body will not work properly because of that. It's not going to produce um, the melatonin when the melatonin is needed, you know, it's going to affect your sleep. And, you know, um, there's actually blue light filters. Um, if anybody wants more information on that, but there's blue light filters that you can put on your phone and you can program them. They usually come with the phone and you can program them to come on when the sun goes down and go off when the sun um, comes back up. So you're not getting, it's mainly the artificial blue light, um, that's mimicking the sun. Now, at one point in time, many, many years ago, and I don't know the exact date, but the church made it illegal to look at the sun. So why would that be? The sun is the source of energy for all plants and indirectly for all animals. Sunlight purifies water, air, and the surfaces of objects as well. So Dr. Thomas Lowe Nichols said, shut up the strongest man in a dark dungeon and he becomes pale like a corpse. His blood loses its vitality and he is liable to scrofulous disease. He loses the power of resisting disease influences. Now at the bottom here, I have, it's, it may seem a little confusing just to read this, but it was mainly a note for myself to speak about some research that I fell upon and I was not able to find it to give you the exact information and the exact research, but there was a man um, who discovered that if he put, a, he, he could grow plants in complete darkness, okay? He could grow plants in complete darkness and he would harness the power of the sun by putting a copper wire along the roots of the plants and running that wire up to the roof of his house and connecting it to a copper plate that was faced towards the sun. So somehow he was harnessing that sunlight through that copper plate down into the wires and those plants growing in darkness were as green as the plants growing outside. So I'm, I'm thinking that something like this might be beneficial to us. You know, most of the time we can't get outside anymore. So people that like myself that are stuck behind the computer all the time, you know, something like this would be very beneficial. I'll have to look into it more and get you guys more information on that. Um, another quote, this is by Dr. Herbert Shelton, take away the sunlight and all life on earth would soon perish. Deprived of sunlight, man loses physical vigor and strength and will develop a disinclination for activity. Now this man is Hira Rantan Manek. He's actually from India and he's known as one of the main pretty much gurus that taught sun gazing. And 
people refer to him in short as HRM. So if you see that later on in my, in my talk here, that's who I'm talking about, Hira. HRM has literally sus, um, subsisted and lived off the sun's energy since June 18th, 1995. He actually passed away last year at the age of 85. Um, I think it was in March uh, last year. And he did not eat solid food. He has been studied by various researchers, such as the Thomas Jefferson University and the University of Pennsylvania. Not only have they found his claims to be true, but medical evidence suggests this man is more healthy than a normal person of his age. Now I have to apologize for the lack of pictures and stuff for the rest of it. Um, I just have not been feeling up to myself, so I didn't have a lot of time. Um, but doctors actually found that HRM's neurons were active and not dying, even though he was not ingesting food. His pineal gland was actually growing, not shrinking, which is very unusual in someone over the age of 50 as well. And the greatest average in someone over 50 for a pineal gland is about six by six millimeters. HRM's was eight by 11 millimeters. Now for, for beginning sun gazers, it's very essential that you follow HRM's protocol to the letter and not combine sun gazing with other things like that you would want, that you would otherwise know um, to amplify the benefits um, like meditation, prayer, mundras, qigong, and other spiritual techniques. Not until you get familiar with it at least, then you can um, implement those things at a later time. Um, so oh, what is this? Yeah. So mainly you don't experience any of the benefits um, if you implement these things at the beginning. Um, the safe sun gazing time is generally from sunrise to one hour after sunrise or from one hour. So one hour in the morning, as soon as the sun rises, you have one hour or one hour before the sun sets. Um, and you can find the, the sunrise and sunset times in your local newspaper. You may think just because you see the sun that the sun's rising at a certain time, but that's not necessarily true. It could be behind the trees. It could be down a little ways. So you want to make sure you do it properly and protect your eyes. So sun gazing should always be done when the UV, UV index is below two. Now, how do you sun gaze? You actually... It's very easy to do. You just, you're gonna stare at the sun for 10 seconds. That's what you start with. You start with 10 seconds the first day. And then the second day, you're gonna add 10 seconds to that. And then the third day, you're gonna add 10 seconds to that. So every day you're gonna add 10 more seconds um, until you build up your time to 45 minutes total. Now you wanna stand or sit erect. I like to stand uh, with your bare feet on a conductive material. So sand, dirt, mud, pavement or concrete, not asphalt. Asphalt is not conductive. Um, grass is an insulator. So you don't wanna stand on the grass. You wanna make sure it's in the uh, dirt or sand or mud or on the concrete. Um, and you also want to make sure that that area is warmed up before you sun gaze. Excuse me for a second. Now, some people, uh, to warm up the area, they either wait for the sun to come up and warm that area. But if it's cold outside, um, you can also, I've seen people where they have sand and they put the the sand on a sheet tray and put it in the oven and warm it up before taking that sand out and dumping it in an area. Of course, you couldn't leave it on the sheet tray. You would have to dump that sand um, onto the ground to keep that area warm. And so you're connected to the earth as well. And of course, like I said, wet grass is not recommended. It actually would drain the energy, but walking barefoot on warm, dewy, sun-charged grass in the early morning is can, can be vitalizing if you're doing qigong, but for sun gazing, there's no wet grass uh, recommended. 
Now, of course, if you wear glasses or contacts, you'd want to remove them. And you're gonna gaze at the sun in, in a relaxed manner. Don't strain your eyes. It's okay to blink the eyes. And if your eyes tear up, um, don't rub them. And it's not gonna be super intense because it's in the morning, okay? Or right before the sun goes down. It's not gonna be like looking at the sun in the middle of the afternoon, which is very bright. But it's kind of interesting because you'll be able to see the ring. There's a ring that circles the sun. At least that's what I see when I look at it. There's just a, a ring that keeps circling around the sun. Now, if it's cloudy out, you can still sun gaze, um, but just don't increase the time. You know, I'm sure we've all had that incidence where we thought it was cloudy out and we didn't have to put sunscreen or anything like that on and we got sunburned. And it's because the sun is still there. You know, it's just um, kind of stifled. And, you know, that goes to show too with the chemtrails, you know, what's going on with those. I'm not really sure. I'd like to do more investigating on this and research, but um, they're trying to reflect things, right? With the chemtrails or spraying us, who knows? We don't even know the true meaning of the chemtrails yet, but I would like to know how they affect the sun gazing. Um, now, when it's cold outside, you don't have to stand outside. Um, you can do it indoors and you can gaze through a window that does not have UV protection on it. Now that's more, more than likely that's going to be the old window pane uh, windows that most of us don't have anymore. Um, so you can also just open your window or your door a little bit while you're doing it. Um, and I would also recommend, which I did, did not add here to ground yourself while you're doing this, um, just like you would be standing outside and there's grounding mats that you can buy that connect you um, to the earth from the inside of your home um, through a grounding cord. And you can connect that grounding cord uh, to um, your, your plugs in your home through the grounding port. It's not actually plugged into the electricity, just the grounding port. Now, when you're sun gazing, if the glare is too bright for you, you can actually start with your hands over your eyes, like how I'm doing now, but have them open just slightly so you can peer through it. And then once you get familiar and, and more comfortable with the, the brightness, you can remove um, your hands from your eyes. And you wanna sun gaze in silence with your arms hanging loosely by your sides. It's important at this time to be passive and receptive and allow the sun to heal your mind. Um, that's why we don't want you to engage in things like prayer and visualization and mantras. Um, you know, we just want that allow, allow it to allow that sun to flow. And I like to envision it. You, you feel it filling up your body. And I, I, I envision it encompassing my heart as well. And I know it says not to visualize, but that's what I, I just feel that when it comes, you know, just try not to be, just try to be more passive and receptive and allow. Um, now after sun, after sun gazing, you're going to press your palms of your hands um, over your eyes, not pressing them. I should say more of a cup. You want to kind of cup them over your eyes for about 10 seconds or so, 10 to 30 seconds. And then you want to gaze at the after image of the sun. So you'll see, um, as you're looking at the, at your hands, you'll see an image of the sun and it's going to look like it's usually in different colors. Mine is usually in green. Um, it, it changes colors depending on that. So you just kind of want to look at that for about 10 or 30 seconds or until the image fades away for you. Now, after or before sun gazing, I prefer after, um, or at some point just during the day, you're going to want to walk barefoot for 15 to 45 minutes. And of course you can't do that when you're inside. Um, you can, I guess, if you have a treadmill inside and you, they do have bands that you can ground yourself with. Um, so that might be something similar, um, that you could do from the inside, but it's kind of just like, um, keeping that charge going for you. So you want to work your way up to 45 minutes, but once you reach, um, the 44 minutes of sun gazing, that's when I guess, I'm sorry, it should say 45. Once you reach 45 minutes of sun gazing, you want to reduce sun gazing time one minute per day 
until you're down to 15 minutes. And you want to also do the walking of the barefoot, barefoot walking for 45 minutes a day on bare earth and maintain that practice for about a year. But after you do this entire process, you don't have to do it anymore. You can just maintain that by walking barefoot every day. Um, you're pretty much, they found that after you do this entire practice, you are fully charged. And you, it, like it says, you need only expose yourself to the sun for a few minutes a day to maintain your charge instead of the 45 minutes anymore. Now, if you enjoy sun gazing or barefoot walking, you can of course continue that as long as you like. Now, if you follow these sun gazing methods, you'll have excellent results in your general health and your well being. Um, if shortcuts are taken, such as increasing time too fast, um, not walking barefoot, um, not standing on the bare earth, then the benefits are reduced. Um, so happy sun gazing. That's my presentation. But I also, um, you know, I've heard some different stories too, from people that were trying to increase the process, you know, try, Oh, I can 10 seconds isn't long for me. I can, I can handle 30 seconds or more. You know, some guy was really pushing it. And I heard a story that he started seeing little, um, he didn't know what they were little alien beings or something coming to him. You know, he was having different encounters and stuff that was freaking him out. So something that he couldn't handle right away because it is, it's increasing your consciousness. It's increasing your spiritual evolution as well. So you're going to see different things like that. If you increase it too fast, you know, it might cause mental issues. If you increase it too fast, it might hurt your eyes if you increase it too fast, but they found if you follow it this way, then it doesn't cause those issues. Um, it actually heals your eyes, it heals your body, you know, it heals all kinds of things and heals the mental health, which is much needed right now in this time, especially in the United States, you know, so many people are suffering with, with all kinds of mental issues, but, um, I'll open up to questions. If anybody has any questions about anything. <clears throat> Oh, Beth is asking, uh, what about standing on rocks? So some people don't recommend, I know HRM doesn't recommend standing on rocks. Um, I feel that rocks would amplify. It really depends where the rocks are. You know, the rocks are high in, in crystal energy as well, for the most part. So, um, and they're conductive as well, as long as they're sitting in the dirt, you know, so it's up to you. I would try different things, but, um, but you can do a little more research on that as well, but I like standing on the rock. So. Anyone else? Have any Has anybody here ever tried sun gazing? <laughs> no, not, I mean, other than looking at the sun, yeah. but I've never done anything like a, like a, a ritual type thing where you need to go step by step by step, you know? Yeah. And it's hard to do because, um, you know, it's, you have to do it first thing in the morning. So you have to get into that routine. You know, I like to kind of switch it up where I get, because there's different spectrums of light that come from the morning sun and then that come from the night sun, you know? So I like to do kind of switch it up where I would do it in the morning one day and in the night, another day. Right. Nice. Sin. Hello. Hi. I wanted to find out what you meant by UV factor. You said it had something to do with not being over four or something like that. How do you find out what the UV under, factor? Yeah, under two. If you actually have a weather app on your phone, it always tells you what the UV index is. So you just want to make sure if you are consistently um finding the proper time for your sunrise and keeping it within an hour of that time or an hour of sunset and keeping it within an hour of that time, then you'll be fine. The UV index is always below two at those times, but sometimes you can go a little bit later as long as the UV index is under two and that the weather apps are free. They can show you that right on the weather app. Thank you, Debbie. Sin. Oh, oh, you're muted, on. <laughs> there you go. I always forget that part. Thank you. That was really great. 
Um, yeah, I've never tried anything that long before, like the official way to do it. Like I have been trying to reset my circadian rhythms because I have a lot of sleep issues and I, I don't sleep and I haven't slept in many years, very solidly. So I've been trying to go out, even though it's later than sunrise, because I'm not usually up or can't <laughs> try to get some sleep. I go out on my balcony. The problem is, well, there's a couple issues. I live in a condominium on the second floor. So going out on a concrete balcony, not ideal to stand in your bare feet, right? Like that's not a good thing. But I have been looking up directly at the sun for maybe 10 seconds or so just to get, try to reset those rhythms. But I haven't been doing like the extended session like you're talking about. Is that a bad thing to do or is it not harmful if I do that at 10 a.m. versus at sunrise to some people, get that some people do that just to get that I guess that um the you the proper UV light in their eyes you know it is um, it's very important to get the proper UV light through your eyes and most of us when we are outside we have contacts or glasses on and it's blocking that so the eyes are actually an extension of our nervous system and we need those light frequencies to go through for our different processes in our body to operate function properly. Um, one reason I got into this is I actually, my ex used to have really bad stomach issues. Like they put a tube down his throat or a camera down his throat numerous times to see what was wrong with his stomach. He would just violently throw up in the middle of the night for no reason, just randomly, not all the time, but just randomly, and, um, he wore the darkest sunglasses ever constantly. He would wear them as soon as he got up in the morning. Um, if he was in a building, he would have them on. And here it was, as soon as I told him that he needed to take the sunglasses off to allow some healing light frequencies, because it was affecting his digestion. Um, he started feeling better and he never had a problem after that. So, you know, things like, um, sunscreen. I don't like using sunscreen. There are different ways that you can protect yourself from the sun, but, um, going back to the sunglasses, when you put your sunglasses on and you're outside in the sun, you're telling your body that the sun is not out. And so your body is not producing the chemicals that it needs to protect your, your body from the sun, to protect your skin from the sun. Whereas if you take your glasses, sunglasses off your body, will protect itself like it's supposed to do, but we're tricking ourselves and we're, we're burning ourselves by putting sunglasses on is mainly what I'm trying to say, you know, can, can I, yeah, that, that's, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, that's a, another interesting point. Cause obviously I try to do this sun gate. Well, many sun gazing sessions that I've been doing and it was working for a while. Like when it was warm outside and there was sun, I would go out and I swear this is no accident. My sleep was actually improving. Now it's gone downhill in like the last month or so again. And I know why, because there hasn't been any sun to look at. I look out every day to look for the sun and it's been gray and dingy. And, you know, I don't mind the cold. I don't care. I'll go out in the cold. I don't mind the cold at all. But if there's no sun to look at, I'm like, I'm trying bright lights in the house, which is not the same thing, um, yeah. obviously. But I've noticed a decline in my sleep quality yeah. since it's gotten gray and nasty out, let alone all the chemtrails and all of that. So, but that's an interesting point about the sunglasses too, because like I will wear them other times when I'm driving or like, I can't see sometimes when I'm driving cause it's glary. And you know, if I'm walking down the street for an extended period of time, I, I will put on a hat or maybe a little sunscreen or something. Cause I just notice all these other wrinkles coming around, but like, I don't know, is that, am I doing myself a disservice by doing that instead of like no sunglasses and maybe just my regular glasses, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, I you want to protect yourself. You want to make sure you can see properly. Like if there's light reflecting yeah. and glaring in my eyes when I'm driving, I'll definitely put sunglasses yeah. on, but you try to be outside, you know, as much as possible. Like I'm, if I'm in my garden, you know, I um, try to not wear my contacts or my glasses, which is hard sometimes because, you know, if you can't see very good, <laughs> you know, you might need your eyes to see pretty good. So um, yeah, I, well, one thing I would recommend for you too, is when you're up on your balcony to get a, um, a grounding mat when you're, have, sun gazing, yeah. you have one that you can stand on or whatever while mm -hmm. you're sun gazing. Yeah. So that would be good. It doesn't matter if you're up higher or not. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm a little out of it today, but so it's okay. <laughs> I had yeah. something else I was going to say that was important. Okay. Totally. Yeah. If you think of it later, um, Definitely. But I, yeah, my main question was like, 
is it bad if I can't get up at sunrise because I'm struggling to get a night, a couple hours of sleep? And usually I get it in the morning for some reason. I can't sleep at night when it's actually dark out because my circadian rhythms are all messed up. But even to go out at, say, 10, you know, I, I check the UV index, of course. I'll, I'll need to do that because I haven't been doing that. But just even to get that those 10 seconds, something to tell my brain, hey, wake up now. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes people do that as well. They just do it. You just do a quick glance. It doesn't matter what time of day, but if you do a quick glance at the sun, it will help you reset your circadian rhythm. Um, It's not a time where you would want to constantly look at the sun, of course, because it could burn your retina. Um, Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason behind it. But um, also when we're living underneath these artificial lights, you know, even though they say they mimic the sun, they don't, they're still missing they're still missing a lot of different healing UV frequencies that we need direct where we can only get directly from the sun. So keep that in mind because, you know, a lot of the aging that we're going through is by living underneath these artificial lights because they're causing the premature aging that we're all experiencing migraines, the flickering of the lights. That's really fast in our eyes. We can't really see it, but it's, it mimics a lot of, yeah, there's just so many bad things with the artificial light. If we could just go back to the cave, caveman days. I think we'd be good, (laughs) but that's where you would want to, you know, if you work under artificial light, maybe wear a, um, long sleeve shirt and just try to protect your body as much as you can from that. Some people do red light at night. So once the sun goes down, um, they switch all their light bulbs to red light and that helps as well. Um, if you work in front of a computer, you know, do the same thing. You can buy a filter, um, for your computer. And I see a lot of people wearing the blue light glasses now, which is nice, but your skin's still getting blasted with that, that blue light and it's causing premature aging. So the best thing to do is to get a blue light filter for your screen. Um, and I use one, it's only a couple of dollars. It's called Iris. I R I S. Yeah. And it's, you can use it on your phone and you can use it on your, um, computer as well. Thank you. Yeah. Really cool. uh, thank you, Zen. Uh, I just wanted to, to uh, comment. We had talked about, you know, the whole sunglasses thing before. Um, and the interesting thing of it is, you, you, Sin, you brought up the driving. I wear contacts. And if I'm out back and forth, you know, outside in the sun, I'm okay. It doesn't bother me. But as soon as I get my vehicle and it's sunny outside, I got to put my, uh, my, my glasses on because it, it bothers my eyes if I don't. Um, and it's the strangest thing, but the interesting thing too, that also came to me was, um, I noticed I was giving, well, it was more just because I was out of contacts and I just didn't have the money to go get new contacts. So I went for months, months without my contacts. And my glasses broke at the same time. So I really went with no, you know, no contacts or glasses. When I had gone to the the eye doctor to get more contacts, he said to me, your eyes are actually better. So I realized, oh, wait a minute. Not having the contacts in or giving my eyes the chance to rest Mm -hmm. and they're healing themselves. So I've been doing like intermittent if I know I'm going to be driving someplace, I'll put my contacts in. But if I'm not going to be going anywhere, I leave them out because I'm letting my eyes kind of rest and, and acclimate to the sun uh, without any issues. It's it's kind of bizarre. I don't know if it's just the contacts are reflect, you know, reflecting the sun. And that's why it bothers me when I'm driving, especially when you're going down and there's trees and it's it's the the light shooting in from the side. That just drives me insane. I yeah, I have my sunglasses on. I have a stigma. I'm always like, I'm gonna have a seizure or something. Those yeah, right. Shadow right. light, shadow light, shadow light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The um, uh, if you leave as soon as you get your first prescription of glasses or contacts, your eyes get weaker every day because you're constant. They're constantly getting used to it. That's why every time you go back to get your eyes checked, you need a stronger prescription usually because your eyes are getting weaker. So we need to learn there's different exercises that you can do and, you know, to strengthen your eyes back up. It takes time, but I mean, there's books out there that teach you. And if I, I should have dug the one out out that I have, but 
it teaches you how to regain your eyesight by just doing different simple exercises, yes. strengthening your eyes back up because they're becoming weak because they're reliant on our glasses and our yep. um, contacts, but also um, cataract surgery, you know, um, cataract surgery affects your eyes as well. And it might, they might be better, but um, I'm not sure. I don't, I haven't done the research into sun gazing with when you've had cataract surgery. Um, so if anybody has had that, I would look into it more before you try sun gazing, because when you get your cataracts removed or the lenses of your eyes removed, it, um, is going to affect the way that the UV can get into your body. So I would do a little bit more research on that. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. Thank you. Dawn. Ah, yes. Um, I have two questions. Uh, I've always heard, I have blue eyes, so I've always heard that looking into the sun is harder with people with light eyes. Uh, I just wondered if that's, if you know anything about that or. I have heard that as well too, that it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's harder or, or what exactly. Um, but I did hear different things about that. So just everybody's going to be more sensitive to things. Um, I think the blue light people would probably be more sensitive. The blue eye people, I'm sorry, would be more sensitive probably just because of the lightness of the eye. So you may want to just start with your hands over your eyes, just to kind of, until you become a little bit more in tune with the, the light energy there. Okay. Um, the other thing is if you're doing this every day and here in central Pennsylvania, this time of the year, <laughs> we rarely have a sunny day. <laughs> if it's raining, you just don't do it. I know you said if it's cloudy, the sun's still there. And I know if it's raining, the, the sun's still there too, but. Yeah, I would say, you know, I didn't get any, see any research on that, but I try not to do it when it's raining just because if I'm driving and it's raining, I have a bad stigmatism and there's just, the lights are reflecting or refracting everywhere. It drives me crazy. So um, I think it would do the same if you were trying to sun gaze when the rain was coming down. Do you know what I mean? It would just be bouncing the the light all over the place and probably not go into your eyes properly. Mm -hmm. So I would skip a day if it was raining. Well, what I've noticed is we have a beautiful day and then there'll be chem trailing and then yeah. we have multiple cloudy days. So yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's uh yeah, it's crazy. Things are coming to light though. So hopefully we'll find out the true nature of what's really going on. You know, it doesn't I don't know. Some people say that the chemtrails are bad. Some people are saying that they were bad and now they're good. You know, they've been taken over by the good guys, but my garden did not tell me that last year. So <laughs> it still did bad when the chemtrails went over. So I'm not sure um, what's going on, but I mean, you see other countries like, um, what is it? Japan, I think that made an artificial sun that they sent up or something like, yeah, we don't know the <laughs> I'm sure we, we know a minute amount of what's going on and we probably don't even know the real truth in the minute amount of stuff we think we know, right. you know, agreed. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dawn. Mm -hmm. Joe. Yes. Uh, Lisa, do you know of anything that, is there any data about sun gazing, how, if it affects you in a positive way, if you have cataracts and is there any, are there any artificial lights that are, that you can get that the frequency is close to the sun that would help? I bought, so, something, I bought something from Philips company several years ago, but I have no way of testing to know what frequency it's at. It's certainly not the same as looking at the sun, but are you, have you heard of anything? Are you familiar with any of that? Well, even the, um, you know, the seasonal uh, depression lights that you can get that you're supposed to, it's right. supposed to mimic the sun that helps you increase your mood. You're still not getting the full spectrum of the light that's needed for your body to work properly. So the sun is always going to be the best option there. Um, it does help a bit, but it's still, you're still not getting all the frequencies. So I think as long as you're um, getting issues, and going back before I forget, going back to the cataracts, um, people have healed their cataracts with sun gazing. Okay. So yeah, so just keep that in mind too. So but when, 
are the, the people that have healed their cataracts, um, they followed it pretty strictly, like every day or whenever there was sun. You just have to do it as much as you can. Like like I said, in Pennsylvania, it's hard to do it consistently because of all the dreary, rainy days, right. you know, or even the, the blizzard. If there's a blizzard out, you know, <laughs> how are we going to be able to sun gaze? So, and then, so just try to do it as much as you can. And then when the sun comes out again, just, you know, either restart it over again or, uh, or I'm sure, sorry, in the springtime, you can either restart the process again from the beginning or just continue where you were and just try to work your way up, you know? Yeah, I'm curious where the where these folks live that cured their cataracts. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> if you if you do some uh, research, try not to okay. use Google. Um, I always use a proxy search engine like Yandex. Um, it's a Russian search engine. You know, when we see um, World Wide Web, right? That's what WWW stands for. Um, we think that we are we have access to all the information in the world and we don't. Google limits um, the information that they want us to see. So most of the true research is going to be through a proxy search engine. You'll be able to find a lot more things that way. Um, I, just, I just started using Brave. It was just suggested to me yep. by a friend as opposed to Yandex. Yeah, uh, Brave browser is good. I like Yandex better just because, um, you know, I the Russians seem to be ahead of their time in a lot of things, you know. Um, the pyramids that I create are Russian geometry pyramids that they've been studying for the past 20 or 30 years. Right. Um, they're now banning, they ban GMOs from their country. They made it illegal for anybody to grow them in their country. If they do, they go to jail. So, I mean, there's, they seem more concerned about the health of their people, which is what a government should be concerned about, you know, <laughs> than ours. So we're getting there. We're going to get there. Oh Yeah. I feel it too, but it's not fast enough. <laughs> thank you, Joe. All right, thanks. Eleanor. Hi, uh, thank you, Lisa. I'm really, really enjoying this. And so there, there's, there's two things. Number one, like I get up in the morning, in the summertime, you know, to water my garden, right? The grass is always wet. So how are you going to get up the sunrise and the grass not be wet? Well, ideally you shouldn't be on the grass anyway, the grass, you can walk barefoot on the grass for the walk afterwards. Um, but when you're doing the sun gazing itself, you want to be on a conductive surface and grass is, is kind of an insulator. It's insulating you between the dirt. So you want to be on the dirt itself. Excuse me. I see. You know, so I okay. actually, I go in my driveway and I'm, um, walking on gravel to get over there, you know, being ouch, 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 trying to get over to my little rounding <laughs> spot, but <laughs> okay. it's a little spot of dirt that I made just for that purpose, you know? Okay. Okay. So, so the other thing talking about cataracts, uh, I've been using MSM and I also put castor oil on my eyelids at night. So it's supposed to go into your eyes and help. So mm -hmm. now I'm going to start the sun gazing too, because I do think they're getting better. Yeah. And, and the doctor said they, they never get better. They only get worse. That's because yet, they were not taught anything besides what the Rockefellers want them to yeah. think. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do believe they're getting better. So, yeah. And then too, yeah. I mean, look into the doctors in Florida. There's a group of doctors down there that heal people's eyesight by shining different frequencies of light through their eyes, different light spectrums through their eyes. Um, I can't think of who they are right now. I had them. I, I, mm -hmm they'll look into it for you but there is a group of doctors down there that do that so well wow. okay well thank you <laughs> you're welcome thank you eleanor we got a few minutes left any other questions yes i wanted to know um if you can ground by sitting down is that okay or do you have to stand you can uh ground by being seated you mean sun gaze and be grounded while you're seated <clears throat> Debbie, you're muted. Yeah, I'm. I'm driving, and it's there's a lot of noise, so <laughs> that's why I muted myself. 
That's okay. Did you, uh, so you can ground, you can ground yourself. The best way to ground yourself while you're sun gazing, if you want to sit down is going to be in a chair. I wouldn't do it Indian style. I don't think you're going to get enough conductivity really. Um, I mean, you would a little bit, but it'd be kind of uncomfortable to sit in some dirt Indian style, you know? Um, so I would do take a chair outside and make sure your feet are in the dirt um, while you do that. And that should be, that should work fine for you. Or if you're doing it inside, you know, use a grounding mat. They also make, if you don't have a mat, they have bracelets that you can put on as well that hook up to the grounding port um, and your electric outlet as well. Okay. Uh, right. Can I ask El Can I ask Eleanor a question? Sure. What uh, I just started using castor oil myself, Eleanor, for the eyes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what sort of drops do you use? Uh, the MSM. Okay. Um, yeah, I've I've been doing that for a while now, and um, I'll I'll tell you, I I saw a different eye doctor. It's with with the same group, but she, when she looked at my eyes. She said, oh, you're nowhere near needing surgery. And the doctor before that, or two doctors before that, said, um, I'm going to let you talk to the surgeon because I think you're getting ready. Oh. So there. <laughs> he was probably just getting ready to go on vacation and needed more money. <laughs> yeah, that's, <right. laughs> that's the sad thing, you know? It's, know. It's so sad that our industry is like that, that you, you can't trust going to a doctor anymore because they literally are paid to keep you sick. You know, yeah. but the castor oil, I just wanted to touch on that real quick. Um, I've been using castor oil as well for my face and, um, you know, to detox and stuff like that. And I had a little like growth on my eye that's been getting a little bit bigger. And as soon as I started using the castor oil after two days, it, it went away. It's going away now. Yeah, it's pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. yeah. yeah I How do you use it? Debbie. I just rub it all over. <laughs> You're supposed to start uh, slow though. And just, I started with a couple little drops in your belly button. That's what they tell you to do. Mm -hmm. Rub it in. And then if you can handle that, because it's going to be like um, detox effects, you know, when you do that. So you could have flu-like symptoms and stuff from just doing that, a headache or anything like that. So if you feel fine, I guess after you've tried it in your belly button, then you can put it on wherever. You can start putting it in a pack and put it on your liver to detox your liver because it pulls the toxins out of your body. Put it, any you put it on your eyelids when you. Yep. I put it all over. I just rub it on like a lotion all over my face now. I actually mix mine with almond oil though. I, I use castor oil and almond oil. And then I use the, um, uh, the gua sha stones to, you know, rub on your face and get the lymph going because that's what the main thing that we need to do before you start detox and you really need to get the lymphatic system working properly, the body's elimination paths. So get the, um, the lymphatic system going these simple things like get a trampoline. If you don't have a trampoline, just jump up and down for a while. <laughs> you know, there's so many simple things that we could be doing to increase our health. And, um, it doesn't have to be, um, so difficult. You know, we have access to it and most of us don't have the money uh, to be spending on a lot of things like this now. And so it's nice to see things like sun gazing and grounding and things that you can do yourself and reconnect to nature. There was, um, <clears throat> we were taught, um, I think there's seven, seven different places where, and this is all free. So you just, um, uh, was the temple, the temple is a, lim a lymph. Is the temple a lymph or is it behind the ears? It's the throat. It's so, right. Well, usually when you're doing the gua sha stone, you're going to do it up like up, right. this. And so, and, yeah. yeah. So right here. Everything is, so we were told, so you tap and then you rub down towards the heart, down towards the heart. And then you have your underneath your armpits. Okay. So you do your armpits, you tap, and then, and then you rub down towards your heart. Um, and then, so it's, it's the the limps, the underarms, under your arms. Um, oh, I need Bruce because he remembers which one. <laughs> um, I think your navel. So you, you tap around your navel and then you go towards your, to, to, up towards your heart. 
Mm -hmm. uh, your pelvic bone is the other one. And then underneath the, uh, the knees, back behind the knees. So you do each one. So you tap, 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 and then you rub down. And that activates your lymph nodes. So we were doing that for like two or three mornings in a row. We were we were getting up and we were doing the thing. And then of course we stopped doing it. And then we remember, oh, we should probably do this again. So we do it and <laughs> I stop. Uh, but that's a good way to activate all the, the lymph nodes first and then get into doing whatever you need to do. <clears throat> um, yeah. Do you have a good recommendation for a good castor oil? Because you want it to be in a glass bottle. Um, you have a you have a recommendation um, because everybody's been talking about castor oil. You know, I talk all the time about colloidal silver, which does a lot of the same sort of things. Well, no, I guess it doesn't. If castor oil is really a detox, um, bentonite clay might be more similar. If it's actually drawing out toxins, the bentonite clay will help do that as well. Um, so this, I don't know if you probably can't read it. It looks like it's coming up on the screen backwards. But this uh, is hang on. organic golden castor oil. Um, it's one of the two that seems to be recommended by everybody that is kind of talking about castor oil. Okay. Does it have a name? <laughs> <laughs> and is yours in a glass bottle? Oh, Queen of the Thrones. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um it's, uh, not only, it's not the only one. It's the only one I've used, and it, but I'm just starting yes. to use it. Yes. So, yeah. Um, the they, kind. Oh, go ahead, Tim. Oh, it's, no, it's okay. They've been talking a lot about Queen of Thrones. Uh, the, the Queen of Thrones castor oil. That's yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. All right. So now I got can... one called. Um, it's called by the Goodbye Company, and it was on Amazon. It was a. Um, it comes in a glass bottle. So anytime you have an oil, you always want to make sure it's in a glass glass bottle because just like it pulls toxins from your body, it pulls toxins from the plastic if it's in a plastic bottle. Um, you know, that's why I don't like tubs of butter. The butter is an oil. It's pulling the plastics from the oil, the tub, you know. So um, why do you want to make sure that's in a dark uh, bottle yep. uh, and it's glass and it's uh, virgin, 100% virgin castor oil, unrefined, and you want it to be hexane and BPA free, which of course, if it's in a glass bottle, it will be BPA free, but hexane free as well. And I'm not sure what the hexanes do, but obviously they're bad. <laughs> so yeah, the, the queen of thrones follows all that. Yeah. A lot of the, there's so many people that are utilizing castor oil now. And I think it's a lot from Barbara, Barbara O'Neill and all of her work. Mm -hmm. So even my boyfriend knows who Barbara O'Neill is. <laughs> and he doesn't have <laughs> any of this stuff really, you know? Awesome. Very good. Well, uh, for Sin and uh, Christina, since this is your, your uh, new to our power up series, uh, we are, Lisa and I are very, uh, good about keeping it at an hour. Uh, so we don't, we try not to go too much over. She does these short little um, segments where she teaches us something. So, um, you know, if you're wondering why we're cutting it short is because we're not cutting it short. It's we're literally an hour, seven to eight. <laughs> so um, uh, thank you all for coming tonight. If you have any questions, you know how to reach out to me uh, and I can get a hold of Lisa at any point. And uh, let's see our next one. Uh, for those of you who do not know, Lisa has been invited to go to India to uh, do a meditation at the pyramids uh, wow. at the end of December. So, um, so, so there's going to be some several. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So, the 14th is going to be our grounding power up series. That one we're all looking forward to. Um, and then that's it for a little bit, not until January 11th, uh, because she's going to be in India. So I'm very jealous. I think you're going to have a, you're gonna have a wonderful time. That is going to be so. I know, I'm excited. I was just, um, I was under the impression since it was a meditation summit that I had to do a meditation for my workshop, but she said I could just speak. 
So I'm going to get with Charlie and we're going to talk about the Russian geometry pyramids and how they relate to the Cheops pyramids and kind of, you know, consciousness and all this stuff. So it's going to be exciting. That's awesome. Yes. Congratulations. That's an awesome, Thank awesome uh, adventure. And another thing too, before everybody leaves, I thought it would be cool. You know, once we get through the power up series, maybe we could get a group together and start implementing all these things together, yes. you know? So there's so many things that you can get overwhelmed with and you kind of, it's nice to have a, a little team, uh, you know, to cheer you on, to do it and to inspire you. So maybe we could do something like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cause we still have, uh, no, we didn't actually set up our meeting yet for um, the uh, pendulums um, and dowsing rods. We need to do that too. Yeah. Um, we can do that in January. Yeah, I absolutely. Think we have a couple scheduled in January right now. Yeah, all I have down is the electro smog just because we had to move that one. Uh, but yeah, unless I'm missing something. But yeah, yeah, we got a lot more. And if you, if anybody has any suggestions on things that they want to learn, please let me know. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so many different topics that we can go through, you know, so. And yeah. next week's going to be awesome because um, like I said, grounding is free, but I'm going to show you how to rig up a multimeter so you can test your body's voltage as well. So yeah. you can tell if, if this grounding is working for you and how, how much it's actually working for you. And, you know, touching things like, a like the core, the extension cord underneath your computer desk and how that raises your voltage extremely right. high. So if you're working at a desk all the time and you don't have a grounding mat, you know, how detrimental is that to your health? So, right. And the multimeter, um, uh, the multimeter tests the voltage of different things, right? That's what yep. that's for. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Let me stop the recording.